Hey viewers, I am DS, your psychologist, and welcome to another episode on Channel Needs. In this episode, we are going to feature the ENFJ in the ENTJ compatibility series. So, is the ENFJ compatible with the ENTJ? Stick around, we have another contestant coming up right here on DLNLD. Now, before we start, this is the ENTJ's cognitive stack, and this is the ENFJ's cognitive stack. They have NI and SE in the exact same position. However, their dominant function is somewhat different. The ENTJ uses TE as its dominant function, and the ENFJ uses FE as his or her dominant function. Because they have different dominant function, yet they have the same auxiliary function, this pairing is going to be very interesting. So very famous ENFJs in real life are Barack Obama and Oprah Winfrey. Closer to home, do we have an ENFJ here in Singapore? Of course. I have identified our MP, Louis Ng, to be an ENFJ. We couldn't catch anyone the minute they removed the camera. So how do you identify an ENFJ? According to statistics, ENFJ is the fourth rarest MBTI type. Even though the ENFJ is considered to be rare, we can still identify the ENFJ easily. The ENFJ is a social butterfly, likes to meet people, and very keen to meet new people and know more new people. One thing about the ENFJ is that they seem to have a lot of energy and are always energized by people around them. This is something that the ENTJ will find it very admirable because I cannot be in a social gathering for too long. It drains me after about two or three hours. Uh, depends. <laughs> I'm not talking about. <laughs> the ENFJ is also very likely to be a leader who wants to drive change for the betterment of the society. When the ENFJ is a student, they are very likely to join clubs like the Interact Club, Rotaract Club, welfare committees. When they become adults, the ENFJ is also very likely to devote themselves to the cause that they believe in. So this could be animal rights, environment, human rights, female rights, or whatever that they really believe in. So the ENFJ being leaders are also very likely to be the chairperson of such a society. Some people may question the enthusiasm and passion of an ENTJ for a fellow human being. Don't worry about that, it is genuine. Now let's talk about the common characteristics of the ENFJ and the ENTJ. There are a lot of common characteristics between the two MBTI types. First, both MBTI types like to keep themselves really busy. So the ENFJ and the ENTJ are really committed to their work. They might spend a lot of time on their work trying to make their work even better. So on this regard, the ENTJ and the ENFJ are very likely to already like each other because both these types have what they value, which is work ethic. A second common characteristic between the ENFJ and the ENTJ is that they are both judger types. So what this means is that both of them can have very strong opinions about something. So the ENFJ is very likely to have strong opinions about the human rights, about human welfare and the world, how to make the society a better place. The ENTJ on the other hand may have very strong opinion about how to make things right, what must be done in order to get the things going. In fact, the ENFJ can be very opinionated. They can just tell you straight, no, I don't agree. So both the ENTJ and the ENFJ can be very direct because they are both judges. So you can have an ENFJ that can tell you straight in your face, no, I don't agree, no, this is not what I want. So the ENFJ can be even more opinionated than the ENTJ because they voice themselves very passionately. In the past five years, I've been the most vocal MP in parliament. One slight difference between the ENTJ and the ENFJ in terms of communication is that the ENFJ is very likely to communicate freely, but the ENTJ may only communicate his or her opinions only when they feel safe to do so. So the ENTJ is very likely to share 
his or her deep innermost thoughts to very close friends only but the ENFJ may share his or her thoughts to everyone the ENFJ on the other hand may not have this kind of classification they don't classify people into groups like close friends, acquaintances, colleagues so they may treat people more equally than the ENTJ so in an ENTJ and ENFJ pairing the ENFJ may sometimes appear to be more dominant especially at the start of the relationship where the ENTJ may not feel safe or comfortable enough to disclose most of themselves as the ENTJ becomes more comfortable with the ENFJ, the ENTJ will want to communicate more freely and readily. When that happens, the ENFJ and the ENTJ may start to compete for the floor because both of them now want to talk. And these two types happen to be the types which really want to talk and trash things out. So when they have an opinion and they don't agree, they will fight their ground. This kind of debate itself can be really healthy. However, if in an ENTJ and ENFJ pairing, at least one of them is immature, then there might be a problem of power struggle. So either one of them or both of them may try to dominate the other in the relationship and in a conversation. That is why sometimes they say that an ENTJ and an ENFJ pairing is like a love-hate relationship. On the one hand, they really seem to be attracted to each other because both are very charismatic and both know their stuff really well. Yet, both of them are so different. <laughs> Because the dominant function of the ENTJ and the ENFJ is really very different, so it is very possible that they might really come into conflict easily. The ENTJ might believe in things that the ENFJ will definitely not support, things like eugenics. Another thing that the ENTJ may be more likely to support is elitism. The ENFJ may not believe in this. So the ENTJ may argue that in a bid to build a nation at the beginning, some people must be sacrificed. Those troublemakers must be jailed. On the other hand, the ENFJ may feel that this is an irresponsible statement because all lives are equal. Because of you, we've come together. This is for George Floyd. So inherently, if the ENFJ and the ENTJ do not have the basic values aligned, they are not likely to make it. But nonetheless, as a couple, their communication, regardless of what their values is, is going to be very interesting because both of the types are abstract communicators. They have NI as their auxiliary function. So they are very likely to use a lot of analogies, especially analogies that both of them only will understand. They may develop their own secret language and it's going to be very fun. Because both the ENTJ and the ENFJ has NI as their auxiliary function, both of them are able to get each other really quickly. So now the problem is how to compromise on the differences in values, if there are. Because the ENFJ and the ENTJ have NI as their auxiliary function, both of them are very likely to have bizarre ideas. And this is going to excite both MBTI types. Because both of them will love it. So Louis Ng has a very bizarre idea of bringing horses to Nisun as a form of therapy for children with special needs. Bringing horses into the heartlands here in Nisun East to help our children with special needs and seniors with dementia. As an ENTJ, I find this bizarre idea so interesting, so exciting, so refreshing and so fun. And I know it works. Because and I. Now both the ENTJ and the ENFJ are going to have very revolutionary ideas that may seem bizarre for others. But the ENTJ and the ENFJ immediately realize that these are feasible ideas that can be brought to fruition. And that these ideas that are not tested are going to work. We live in a society and a world where people want to rely on tradition because it's very safe. People want to rely on tested methods. However, the ENTJ and the ENFJ are both very rare types that really want to bring about change. They are drivers of change. And in a certain way, 
You can also say that the ENFJ and the ENTJ are rebels. They live in the future, they want to revolutionize. And this is where the ENFJ and the ENTJ are really going to find it. They are going to help each other to propel forward. Because both of them are going to throw in more ideas that will fuel this passion and enthusiasm. So if both of them have values that are aligned, they can really work together and make the world a better place. And because both the ENFJ and the ENTJ are leaders, they are also very likely to become a power couple. So as a power couple, they are very likely to invite the envy of all the people around them. Wow, your wife is so capable. Wow, your husband is so capable. And you are so capable too. Yeah. <laughs> so in a way, the ENTJ and the ENFJ couple is like a celebrity couple. America's favorite on-screen couple. The NI and SE in the same position for the ENTJ and the ENFJ does play a very significant role in their relationship. Because SE is the third function for both the ENTJ and the ENFJ and SE as a third function is manifested as a 10-year-old innermost child, the ENFJ and the ENTJ are very likely to trigger each other's childlike characteristics. So they can be very spontaneous, they can be shopping along the road and when they just feel like it, they might start playing in the fountain in front of the mall. You know, a lot of other MPTI types may say, Oh, I'm going to dirty my shirt, my shirt will get wet. They might be very reserved about it. But the ENTJ and the ENFJ, when the circumstances are right, can really enjoy each other's company like children. They can let their hair down and really play. And the important thing is they don't care about what other people think. And this couple is going to make a very fun couple. So how can the ENTJ add value to the ENFJ in this ENTJ-ENFJ relationship? Now the ENFJ may sometimes be very concerned about the welfare of other family members. So it is very natural for the ENFJ to be very concerned about his or her family members. It is very likely that they will want to render their personal help as a family member in the capacity of a daughter, son, brother, sister or whatever to a family member who is struggling. So the ENFJ is very likely to want to solve the problems of the people around them and sometimes this leads to no end. So they may lend money to a relative but this money will never come back. Of course the ENFJ will really know the limit when to stop helping someone, when it is the right time to stop because sometimes some people will not appreciate them and will really treat them for granted. So as I have mentioned, the ENFJ knows when to stop. This is because the ENFJ is actually an intelligent feeler. The ENTJ can come in by providing the ENFJ solutions in how to help the relative if they really want to help and can also put a gentle reminder to this ENFJ that it is now time to stop. So in a way, the ENTJ can help the ENFJ decide if the ENFJ trusts the ENTJ. Now how can the ENFJ help the ENTJ? The ENFJ can help the ENTJ bring out the compassionate side of the ENTJ. So many a times, the ENTJ may not be able to display the charitable side of him, the generous side of him, the compassionate side of him. The ENFJ will be able to help the ENTJ bring out these certain characteristics. So overall, my verdict for this couple is that it may be challenging because of their differences in values. However, it is going to be a very fun, powerful relationship. If it works. Now personally, I have not had any pairing with an ENFJ before, but I do wish to know a fellow ENFJ and see how as friends our dynamics will work out. Oh, I already have an ENFJ friend. Okay, okay. <laughs> alright, alright. So we have a few MBTI types that we have not discussed yet in the ENTJ compatibility series. So we are going to talk about them really, really soon. If you have not subscribed, do consider subscribing so that we can continue to bring you more MBTI and psychology. Okay, I am going to sign off now and I'll see you in my...
next episode. Goodbye.